Stan Jibalisco here with a little explanation of how an analog ohmmeter works. You may be somewhat mystified by the way that an analog ohmmeter scale looks, where it has that little lemnus gate, you see that over there, infinity symbol, and then zero ohms is all the way over here to the right. The ohm scale on this particular meter is the green scale at the top. And you multiply by various um, uh, times 10, times 1K. Uh, this is really not a particularly sophisticated meter, as you can see. It's just meant for quick and easy tests. But what I've got here is a 6-volt battery and some resistors that I used in a previous video. I don't know if you can actually see the color codings on these resistors or not, color codes on them, but they range from 1K down to 220 ohms, I believe, so that we ought to be just fine uh, if we use the scales provided on this meter. Now what you need to do first with an ohm meter or any kind of meter like this is make sure that you always leave it in the off position when you're not using it because otherwise you're liable to wear the battery out and all of these meters have batteries. In fact that's what an analog ohm meter really is. It's a current meter. What you're measuring up here is current maximum current at the right and zero current down here at the left. Zero current through any component would indicate infinite resistance. The maximum full scale current on here is adjustable by means of internal resistors that you can uh, switch in and out by switching this switch. The internal resistors may go in series and or parallel with the meter uh, so that you can get a zero ohm reading with a direct short. But what you need to do first, before you measure any resistances on any scale on an ohmmeter like this, is to tweak this zero ohms adjust control so that it really says zero with a dead short. You can see right here I've got these these leads shorted out and you've got zero ohms. Now we're going to start with the times 10 scale and see what we get for this resistor over here on the right. Well, that's pretty high up there. It looks like about 50 times 10. That's about 500 ohms. Let's see what happens if we go to the 1K scale. Now when you switch scales on an analog ohmmeter, you got to hit that ohm zero ohm adjust uh, control again because otherwise that meter isn't going to indicate zero with a dead short. That's You always need to do that with a analog ohmmeter like this before you try to measure any resistance and every time you switch that switch you gotta do it again. Let's look at this resistor again see what we get. You see that? Looks like about six tenths. Well, <laughs> is it 500 ohms or 600 ohms? I think we can believe the 50 here more than we can believe the the 0.6. Let me see if I can. I believe this is a 470 ohm rated resistor. Although those colors don't really look like yellow and violet to you, do they? They they don't look like that to me, but. I'm not going to concern myself with that very much. Now that we got it, I mean, you know, it is what it is. And that's another thing. Whenever you use resistors in a circuit, you're building a circuit, you want to use resistors, whenever you do that, always measure the resistance with something. You may uh, see something uh, color-coded bands on there and infer that it's this or that many ohms, but not only will there be some error some tolerance error and the actual resistance be a little different but sometimes you'll get a component that's a faulty one and it'll be way different you don't want to have to try and diagnose a malfunctioning circuit with a faulty resistor somewhere in it 
you want to make sure the resistors are good before you put them in. So, let's measure this one. Well, that looks like about 0.9. So I can assume that's probably about 900 ohms because you've got 0.9 times 1K. Let's go back to the times 10 scale. And once again, we have to tweak this little thing. Kind of a pain in the neck. That's why digital meters have gained favor. My digital meter, I thought the battery was bad, so I replaced it. And it gave me some meaningless symbols on the display, so I figured it's the end of that meter. It now resides in my waste basket, along with some uh, greasy paper towels that I use to clean up some fried food with. Let's measure this now in the times 10 scale and see what we get. Well, now that's pretty hard to read up there, but it looks like about 90. Well, no, it's, it's actually... Yeah, it looks like about 90. So we can be pretty sure that's about a 900 ohm resistor. Let's, let's look at this one. Oh, we get a little easier to read thing here. We get a 20... See that, how that kicks up into the green scale? Looks like 20... I don't know, maybe 25? 26? So times 10, it'd be 250 or 260. Well... If it's that low and we try to measure it times 1K, we're going to get we're going to get way over here on the right-hand end of the scale and we're just not going to get anything uh worth worth bothering about there. So, uh, we measured that one. Let's measure the one all the way over now on the left. That one looks like about maybe 30 on that scale, so that must be about 300 ohms. Okay, so let's say that this is 300 ohms. That's 260 ohms. That one is 900 ohms. And that one is 500 ohms. 300 250, that's 550, 900, that's 1450, total in series now, 500, that would be 1950 ohms. Well, let's see what we get when we measure the resistance across the whole bunch. It should be 1950. Well, that's pretty hard to read in the 1K scale or the times 10 scale, pardon me. So let's go back to the 1K scale. Zero that thing out again. Take a reading now. Uh, looks a little bit over 2. I, I said 1950. It looks like maybe 2050 on this meter. So, as you can see, a meter like this is not particularly precise but it'll, it will at least give you a ballpark estimate when you measure ohms. The, the thing about any analog ohmmeter that you need to remember is what you're really measuring here is current. You have a battery in there, and you have some series and parallel resistors across this probably a micro ammeter, and if the battery starts to go soft on you, you're going to have trouble measuring ohms because your zero ohms adjust isn't going to get you at zero. You're going to have to replace the battery and you're going to know that uh, because it <laughs> it isn't going to be able to zero out anymore. So you're going to know that uh, pretty well. So that's how an analog, a very simple analog ohmmeter works and that's why the scale is reversed. You're really measuring current. The more current, the less resistance, regardless of the position of that switch. Again, when you're finished, turn that thing off to save that battery. Stan Jibalisco, from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Signing off until next time.
So long.